Hello, 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 and welcome to Pitch Zone, a weekly show here on, live, uh, on YouTube as well as streamed to Facebook that helps entrepreneurs and executives level up your presentation skills. Each week, I'm joined by a co-host, Nathan Gold, who unfortunately cannot join us today. So it's me and our esteemed guest, and I am so delighted and happy to have this special guest here today with us. She joined us in episode 42 and talked about audience engagement and the feedback was simply phenomenal. If you have seen that episode, hooray, hooray. If not yet, I encourage you to watch it. It is full of insights that will help you engage your audience. So Tatiana is waiting, but I just realized she is actually waiting. Where are you? You are at a bus stop. What's going on, Tatiana? Well, I've, had, I've had quite a bit of a traffic delay here. Can you please send an Uber for me? I really want to be on time for the show, but this is just crazy out here. I cannot send you an Uber, Tatiana, because I'm already in the future somewhere with all of the things that I do. So we are going to try something totally different. We are going to beam you into the pitch zone arena here. Let's see if that okay. works. Hold on. That sounds like a good plan. I'm ready. All right. All right. The beaming is in process, progress. The beaming is in progress. And there is Tatiana. But Tatiana, somehow you look a little bit skewed here. I don't know what happened to, during your travels. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe some, it's the light beams. They yeah, kind of so, distorted. So, so, Ooh, something didn't go right. I think. Comfortable. Oh, what ah, happened? What Tanya, happened? Help, help me out here, please. Oh, okay. That is I think we got better. it. I think we got it. But Tatiana, you have a crackling in the sound. Now, I'm not sure if our audience can hear that as well or not. So let's first, before we even start, say hello to our audience. And I see we have Anthony Nassar in our audience here. Anthony, it's so great to have you back. I remember you watched the first part of this episode as well. Get ready for some real, real solid nourishment here. We also have Rick Pollack. Uh, Rick is joining us from Boston, Massachusetts. Rick, I hope all is well on your side. And Debbie Krusik, hello and good morning to Durango. We have Sammy from Kenya and Massimo Peroncelli. Um, who confirms there is a slight little crackling. So we get Tatiana in, in just a second again and hopefully crackling free. Tatiana, welcome back again. So we went hey. From, hey. from an Uber demand to beaming to crackling <laughs> and here you are, Tatiana. It's such a pleasure to have you back. Thank you so much. Great to see some familiar names in the chat as well. Really happy to be here. Weird, I don't hear any crackling on my end, but mm -mm. hopefully leaving and coming back has taken care of that. No, but I saw that Massimo said that he was hearing it too. So something yeah. is going on here. Well, well, it's gone now, so we are good for the moment. And uh, we also have Andreas here from Singapore. Wow, staying up late to watch Pitch Zone. Absolutely awesome. And Rudy, taste the speaker, is joining us from Miami, Florida. So we have a really, really cool audience already over here. Other people will be trickling in over time. Tatiana, we had such a blast the first time. And you shared a couple of really, really cool bits of information. And one of them was something that really stuck in my mind. And that is that concept of Carmen Simon and the habituation. So um, before we really, really dive in, can you remind us very briefly on what we talked about the first time and What's in store for today? What do you have for our audience here, for our uh, our our viewers Definitely. online? Let's dive in that. Happy, happy to share that with everybody watching. So our plan for today, some people call it an agenda, I like to call it a plan, is doing a little bit of retrieval practice. Like you said, Claudio, 
This is part two. So what exactly did we talk about in part one, just as a quick recap, and that we call retrieval practice in the world of education, where we are retrieving things from our mind. So if you watch the show, think back to what you remember. Then we're also going to talk a little bit more about the science of memorability and how that pertains to our presentations. And then we're going to talk about a concept called 5D speaking. And I want you all to walk Ooh. away understanding what 5D speaking is and how you can incorporate that into your presentations right away. So to do a little bit of this retrieval practice, I'm going to ask everybody a question here. This is We talked about this in the last episode, but if you didn't hear it, that's okay. You can still take a guess here. On average, what percent of our content do people tend to remember? Is it 60%? Is it 45%? Is it 25%? Or is it 10%? So let me know. Do you think it's A, B, C, or D in the chat? And of course, Claudio, I don't know if you mm -hmm. remember the answer, but I think you do remember the answer. So maybe it's not fair for you to take a guess, but we'll see if anybody in the chat. I know it takes a little while for mm -hmm. the time delay. Well, well, because we are streaming live, so... Now it'll take a little bit for us to to get some comments here. And I see we already have answers from Debbie, Venture, Momentum, Rick, Massimo, Andreas, and Sammy. And I see all the answers coming in. And look at this. We have an incredibly intelligent group of people who have already guessed it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It is, on average, 10%. And this is the work of Dr. Carmen Simon. And somebody that I want to recommend that you guys follow, you know, she is available on LinkedIn as Dr. Cam Carmen Simon, and you can follow her work. You can look her up on YouTube, all of her content. So Claudio, c come on over, chat with me. I will, I will, she I will. A, Hold on a second, Tatiana. <laughs> Hold on a second, Tatiana, because the crackling is back. It just started to ah. appear while you were talking. So I'm not sure what could be going on right now. Um, to all the viewers out there, I apologize. Tatiana, say something because it only happens when you make his life. I wonder if it has something to do. So it happens when I'm talking? Yes. Oh, gosh. Hmm. Yeah. So I recommend yeah. quickly hop out and come back in. We might have to do that every two, three minutes. Uh, again, I apologize. Sometimes technology just throws you curveballs. And luckily, Tatiana and I have a little bit experience with these platforms. So if you bear with us, I haven't seen anybody drop off yet. It's all good. Welcome back, Tatiana. Let's see how many times we have to do this. Round three. <laughs> no idea what this could. I have never once yet on a live stream no. had a crackling issue. So this is definitely no. a new one. But yep. are we are we good? We are good. We are good. OK. Fantastic. So resuming, resuming the conversation about Dr. Carmen Simon's work, right? We, we talked about this a bit in the, in the first episode, and it's just something so important for us to remember. Because there's nothing we can do about this fact that on average, people are only going to remember about 10% of what we say. So that means that from that first episode, if you watched it, you're only going to remember 10%. And it is an average, and she does make that point because some people will remember more, some people will remember less, and it depends on many factors. But the research shows that that is an average. So yes, Andreas, it is scary, right? Only 10%. But here's the good news. We can help focus and have a little more control over what 10% they remember. We can't do anything about the way that our brains operate, that we're probably going to forget 90% of it. But what we can do is direct our attention to certain things to help people remember that important 10%. And most of you who are doing presentations or you're doing persuasive types of speaking or even selling or promoting a channel or promoting your content, we have some control over what they're going to remember. So let's not let it be random what people remember. Let's help them. And this is where the science comes into play. And we talked a bit about, well, in order for people to remember content, it has to be interesting and memorable, right? So it can't be boring. I'm sure that everybody understands in the audience that boring is forgettable, right? So we have to be more memorable. And how do we approach that memorability is really important, right, Claudio? The, 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 so hopefully 
hopefully, you know, you, you guys remembered our, our introduction today, that that is a little bit different than the typical, hi, I'm Tatiana Rodriguez. Thank you, having, thank you for having me, Claudio. I really value being here, which I do. <laughs> All of those things are true. But it's about that attention getter right from the very start. Can we do something that would make a person's brain go, oh, that's a little bit different from the norm. I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. So putting those so, kinds of things into play are, is important for presentations, right? So what, what are some other ways? Like what we did here today is surprise, right? We surprised the audience with something that they did not expect. What are other ways that you can on purpose make your message and your appearance more memorable? Well, let me highlight. I think that you did a fantastic job, Claudia, with sharing the PowerPoint content, the, that feature, that cameo feature. So I'm going to mm. pop myself in. Mm -hmm. So for example, being able to do things like this on screen, right? And th the idea is that let's say you're in a Zoom meeting, you're doing a virtual presentation in Zoom. If you share your screen, you become a tiny little part of the screen. But when you do it this way, right, this is actually using PowerPoint and your camera you can put yourself in lots of different scenarios, right? You can actually be a bit more engaging. So imagine showing up on a screen for parts of the screen like this, it just adds intrigue into the mind. So certainly thinking about, okay, how can I leverage the technology that's at my disposal right now that doesn't cost me anything extra? Most people have PowerPoint. This is also available in Keynote. I'm a Keynote user. But Claudia, since you put out the PowerPoint cameo thing, I thought, let me check it out because, you know, I teach public speaking and leadership and I really want to be able to offer people options. Not everyone is going to be a Mac user like me. So I want to familiarize myself with things across platforms and being able to make content like this with existing software is a game changer. Now, it does take more time, more effort and more planning, but mm -hmm. I think the payoff is totally worth it. 100 percent. Absolutely. And just just to make sure that we really fully all understand here the gravity of this, right? Tatiana is showing you a PowerPoint presentation and she put the video feed of her webcam into that PowerPoint presentation. And all of a sudden she appears in such a more interesting way that people automatically are going to lean forward and go like, hmm. So you can do this as well with your PowerPoint that you have installed on your computer and your webcam that you use every single day. You just have to put those two together. I do have yes. a very quick uh, tutorial video on my channel. So I encourage you to check that one out. And if you want to get the deck that Tatiana is using right now, go to my website, senhauser.com slash cameo, C-A-M-E-O, or scan this code here. I made this deck available. It has 50 creative slides in it. You can appear on a billboard. You can appear in an old fashioned TV, whatever your heart desires and wow your audiences. I make almost a bet that when you present in your next online meeting like that, people will afterwards come up to you and ask, how did you do that? Because they are so used to PowerPoint slides that are being shared that are all static. And the presenter yes. up, as Tatiana said, in their small little postage stamp sized window. That's no way to engage your audience. That's no way at all. So thank you for bringing this up and thank you for using this slide deck, uh, Tatiana. Of course. Yes, I, I highly recommend it. And I really think I really think that people should take advantage of your generous offer. I mean, this was, I'm sure, a lot of work, Claudio, mm -hmm. to make. So thank you for saving mm -hmm. me the trouble because this is great stuff that we'll be able to use. So please, 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 you're watching this. Take advantage of his generosity. Watch the short video. Put it into play. I had a ton of fun, right, getting creative and crafty, putting myself in uh, in all these little different little scenarios here, right? So let's just say I want to talk about old technology. I could pop myself in an old TV, and that would be a little bit more memorable than me simply talking about old 
TV or old technology, right? Just a way of illustrating those concepts in a way that is so much more powerful. Now, you, you talked about, Claudio, how we get used to things, right? We're used to PowerPoint. And that is, again, from the neuroscience, Dr. Carmen Simon's work and other neuroscientists' habituation. As human beings, we have a tool that's evolutionary. It has strong evolutionary value. We need habituation to be able to acclimate to stimulus, right? Every little thing can't take our attention away or we would constantly be distracted and having to refocus. So we get accustomed to certain stimulus, even if we found it really exciting and novel in the beginning. Case in point, PowerPoint, right? At first, we were, those of us who were around when PowerPoint came out, we were like, wow, this is amazing. Because we were looking at it, you know, remember transparency films <laughs> or carousel spinning uh, what do you call those? Uh, they were slides, but they, they were, were different slides. kinds of like carousel. The, the, the they were actual feet, slides. Right. We call them 35 millimeter slides, right? And slides. this is why we call PowerPoint slides. Slides, right? Th that exactly. name in we PowerPoint came actually. Things. Yep. Yep. And I remember the so, days, you know, because I, I actually visited customers with these these round carousels, you know, and all the slides carefully arranged in there. You walk in, you drop the thing when you just walk into the meeting room and the sorting began. So, yeah, those were the really, really great, great days indeed. <clears throat> yes. So it was, it was different, right? It was very different. Like, I'm sure when that came out, it was awesome. But now and just a shout out to Philip who says he needs to drop out. But yeah. thanks. Thanks for being here. I want to come back around to Philip's comments, too. Uh, but mm -hmm. so we get used to things, right? This is part of our nature. That's why we can be in a cafe hearing some music, hearing the coffee brewing, hearing some chit chat, and we can still do our work because of habituation. Now. The problem, too, comes in when we're doing presentations and we want to be engaging. We can't keep everything the same. It's just a fact. If we fall into a rhythm, 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 and it stays the same, stays the same, stays the same, that automatically puts people in a state of what? In sleep mode, right? When, when we That's why vacuum cleaners, car rides, these kind of things soothe babies and put them to sleep when they're a little restless because of the rhythm. And that's what we have to avoid. We can't fall into a rhythm, 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 rhythm. In the world of education, an equivalent would be a person who lectures one way speaking the entire time. It's just too hard to pay attention to one person, even if you love the professor, even if you love the topic. What we need is switching it up, right? We need stimulus. What is a little bit unclear is how often it should be, but to be honest, I do think it has to be pretty frequent. You know, we do live in a world where we're used to a lot of changes. If you think about social media, and I know we're not going to talk too much about it, but we can learn a lot from the way social media gets people's attention and we can apply it in an ethical way. So changing up the stimulus is one of the most important things. But those stimulus, I still think should be relevant to the content, right? I think it should be tied. I do think it should be meaningful. We want to make them memorable by using the digital resources we have at our disposal. And I know mm -hmm. Philip is mentioning tools like an A10 Mini, which is a more advanced level type of tool, and OBS. You know, I started out with OBS, and that is a free tool available to everyone. Claudio, you also started with OBS. Yep. And uh, now both of us use Ecamm, which is a production software like OBS but it is for Apple only and there is a cost associated to it. I find it a bit more user friendly. However, I do think it's important, like I said earlier, to be acquainted with all types of tools to be able to give people options. So I know people who do wonderful things with OBS as well, but that is a, a next level kind of a thing, right? That is like, you have to take the time to learn to learn these tools, but it, it is absolutely amazing what we can do. Even the simplicity of being able to for example, put up a, a, a timer, right? So I'll often start a, a class like this. I'll show you this screen. You're going to hear some music. Hopefully it won't be too loud. All right, so you, you're able to add 
visuals. You're able to add a video in the background. You're able to add music. You're able to add a timer. You're able to put your your name, your title, a lower thirds. So so many different things that we can do. So in this case, you know, I'm able to put my name and a glowing bar around me. All these different things that we can do to have a stronger virtual presence and be a bit more engaging to the audience, I think are just absolutely excellent tips to be able to to put into play. So you know about the 10% rule, which is called the forgetting curve, right? We forget over time and we forget quickly, but then that drop off rate kind of falls off. So we need to help people remember our content and using visual imagery and digital tools are fantastic ways of doing that. I also think it's important to really understand who our audience is, right? Have, have really a strong understanding. So it takes a little bit of audience analysis and that, that will change, right? Depending on who your audience is and when you're, and when you're presenting. But if I can go on, I'd like to chat a bit more about this concept of 5d speaking, Claudio, but unless, Mm -hmm. unless there's something else you want to add about that. No, 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 not at all. And and that's actually, I want to spend a lot of time on that 5D speaking because this is what got my attention before. And, um, you know, curiosity. Uh, if you've ever been to a workshop of mine, this is one of the areas that I spend a lot of time in is how to make people curious because that's how they pay attention ultimately. And I am now super, super curious about 5D. I know about 3D. I know about 4D, but 5D? Tell us. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a concept that I learned. I-, I was raised in New Jersey, lived there most of my life. And there's a, a man named Bill Hugterp who has a company called Own the Room based in New Jersey. And this is, a, a, I learned this 3D concept, right? Three dimensions for speaking and presenting. So let's start with 1D, right? If you If you think about 1D. Take a guess. I'm going to tell you what is 1D. Think about it in your own mind. What's 1D? The first dimension is the words themselves, right? In public speaking, we call it diction, which means our word choice. So that first dimension, the words that we choose, what are, what are we going to say? And this is part of that planning process. We sit and we write the words, we write the presentation. And I know you've had guests on your show. I watched the episode with Aaron and Scotty, who are both in the world mm-hmm. of words and writing, they mm-hmm. they talked they talked about that. So that's an episode I would recommend going back and listening to for this one D element as you think about preparing your words for your speech, your presentation. All right, two D. You could take a guess now. What is two D? What could you do if one D is words? Two D is tone. Tone. Mm. It's not just what we say. 1D is the what we say. 2D is the how we say it. The emotion, the energy, the vocal variety. You've also had people on the show, Claudio, that talk about our vocal presence. And we have to remember how powerful our voice is to keep somebody engaged. You know, it's very few people have uh, are on the extreme of being so boring that they're hard to listen to. But most of us where we fall into the trap is where we get too comfortable for too long and we forget how much energy is required in our voice to really keep people's attention. So you have to bring your A game and you have to be very aware of your energy levels too when you are presenting to know, hey, I'm gonna be delivering this presentation at nine o'clock in the morning, but I'm more of a night person. Like I really have to take great care and make sure that I'm bringing a lot of energy to that meeting if it's not a time where I naturally feel energized or even a topic you're not naturally energized by. So tone, the how we say it is the second dimension. 3D then, right? our 3D part, this part is now, if you can guess, I'll give you a hint. (laughs) 3D is about body language, right? This is now this third dimension that we add in. We've got the words, we've, we know how we say. So imagine a, a podcast, you, you hearing the words and you're hearing the meaning with those words, but you're not seeing the body language. Whereas in a virtual or a physical space, that body language has to come across too. So one key tip for you is where are you placing your hands in your virtual presentations? Are they beneath your desk? Are they hidden, tucked away, out of screen? Because our hands, this is something I learned from Vanessa Van Edwards at the Science of People, our hands are our trust indicators, right? 
-hmm. We know subconsciously, we look for safety in a person's hands. So if we're constantly displaying open hand gestures and we're showing our hands when we're speaking, that actually subconsciously conveys trust to other people. So be aware, how are you framing yourself? You know, are you in the frame like this? Where your hands aren't even visible, where you're kind of small in there. So making sure that this is how, this is why I square myself up this way and why I have a standing desk so that when I speak, when I present, I'm standing up. I can naturally bring more energy to that than sitting down. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule. You can be sitting down and still be hugely engaging and presenting. So love that. And hey, welcome back, Phil. All right. Phil says he's back in the chat. Love that. Yep. So that is 3D, right? All right, guys. So we covered 1D, 2D, 3D. Now we're up to 4D. This fourth dimension then is a part of nonverbal communication. And it is our space. How are we utilizing the space? Now, in a physical world, when we're next to people, this is the stage. It's the room. It's the platform that we have. How do we move? And we might move, like I like to say the example of if, if I'm doing a presentation and it's going to be three parts, past, present, and future, right? I'm talking about where we were as an organization, where we are today, where we want to go. I might choose to specifically plant my feet over here when I talk about the past, then move over to the middle when I talk about the present, and then take another step in the opposite direction when I talk about the future. That's a great way to use space. But then in this world on screen, this is our space, right? We have this much space, but we can, we can lean in on camera as well, right? We can take a step back when we need to. And of course we have to be conscious of our proximity to a microphone, which is why I, I love the idea of wireless microphone or hands-free microphones better, but the quality is so much better with these that I had to make a trade off. But certainly realizing how am I using this space? And hopefully you can see like even the way that a person moves with their arms, with their hands, and the, the things that we bring in are important when it comes to this element of space. And then 5D, the last one, is everything that falls into the category of imagery. And this is a slide deck that we share, visuals that we share on screen. A lot of what we've done today, sharing with you when Claudio puts my name up, when he puts his name up, when he has graphics that appear behind you, where you see it say pitch zone. Even when I was showing you the, the PowerPoint slide, right? We're talking about the TV. We're talking about different ways that we can present ourselves. This is a use of imagery as well. And anytime we can make it relevant to the audience and even personal to ourselves is a big deal. Right? I'll show you another, another way to use imagery that I learned from you, Claudio. This was also using PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I was able to create this little effect where, like, let's just say somehow I want to bring in a cute dog into my presentation and just you can bring a dog image. You can. That's still good. But you can also find these little ways to animate. So it's another tip that I know I learned from you. And it could be something else. It could be a map. It could be a car. It could be lightning. There's so many different things that we can do that would help us create that sense of 5D speaking. So I wanted to share that with everybody listening so that you can think about these five dimensions when you're preparing for your presentation the words, the tone, the way that you're saying them, your body language, how are you communicating? Are you communicating with confidence or are you making yourself small? How are you utilizing the space that you have? The online real estate here, right? This, this square that we're actually technically it's a rectangle, the rectangle that we have here. And then how can you use imagery? And imagery incorporates audio, video, all sorts of technology when you're utilizing this to present your content. Mm, I so, so love this and apparently Philip too, because you welcome him back and he immediately responded with it's more interesting here. So thank you, Philip, for spending <laughs> your time with us here. <laughs> and oh, your follow-up so you. follow comment as well that these multimedia injections are so needed in education and not just education, but 
any presentation uh, that we are doing, whether it's an investor pitch or whether it's an educational presentation, uh, very, very much needed. Now, the one thing that dawned on me when you went through these five Ds is that traditionally public speaking courses, they so focus on the first three and spend a little bit time maybe on the space, a little bit time on the visuals. Uh, but in an online world, I believe that those number four and number five have actually more weight. And in some sense, they also blend into each other because as you said, you know, your space now is basically a canvas of pixels, 1920 by 1080, and that's your stage, right? So um, yes. I love it, Tatiana. I think we can have a discussion, Claudio, because the first three are still the core, right? Like if I have no, if I lose all my visuals, if I've, yep. if I've got nothing but my webcam mm -hmm. and let, let's, you know, now, yes, I have a Sony ZV-E10 mirrorless camera. I have great content, uh, great high quality gear, but let's just be real for a second. I'll, I'll, I'll go to my regular webcam, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. if this is all I've got, I've got to <laughs> make this work too, right? It's, it's okay, right? It's okay if you don't have great gear. We can talk about that another time, but if this, this is my Logitech webcam, right? If this is what I'm working mm -hmm. with, as long as I'm making, as long as I'm offering valuable words and I'm saying it in a way that's energizing and I'm presenting myself with confidence, with energy, that is the most important. But we have other tools at our disposal. We can use stronger graphics to make it even more memorable. And I think that's, that's the next stage of all of this, right? You're right that we need to be thinking about these fourth and fifth dimensions about our use of space and all of the visual content that we bring. And you saw today, not all of it was digital. A lot of it is digital, but I also think, again, that stimulus, we're, we're, we are getting used to awesome digital content. So every now and again, there's nothing wrong with bringing something mm -hmm. physical onto your screen too, mm -hmm. right? Today it was just the use of some note cards to switch it up a bit, to create a bit more interest rather than getting you used to just having things pop up on the screen. So we're trying to display the concepts to you here as, as we're laying them out. What, what do you think, mm -hmm. Claudio? Well, you just, you just hit the nail on its head with the card, right? Because today, when you, when you upload a video on YouTube, and you let it run for a couple of days or weeks, you get all these stats. And one of these stats is actually showing you exactly where people are dropping off the video, right? So, so you have this curve usually that starts with 100% of viewers. And then in the first 30 seconds, a lot of them drop off, you know, they just click on the video and go, oh, is this something for me? No, next, next, next. And some people stick with it. And so the curve then flattens out a little bit and maybe drops off again towards the end when people realize, okay, now he's wrapping up and uh, I don't need to hear all of that. Subscribe to me and whatever stuff. Speaking of subscribe to me, there's a button down below <laughs> just in case, you know. And there's, there's your cute little doggy. <laughs> right. And so what, what this line, this line is not a clean line, but it's a jagged line. It goes up and down. It has these little spikes and mini spikes in between. And when you, when you do something that you just did, that's when you usually see in the videos, you see a spike. Whenever there is something on the screen that changes, where all of a sudden something is in front of the camera and goes away again, and now I'm messing up my autofocus. <laughs> Yours is so much faster, Tatiana. Um, <laughs> but these spikes, right? And when you really start to analyze this, this is what you realize is that people are scrubbing through the video. They are looking at the small, small little images. They see one speaker, blah, 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 a talking head there. And all of a sudden something changes. They stop. And that's when YouTube starts to count the seconds of viewing time again. And that's what leads to those spikes. So very, very That's, interesting. That is interesting. And I'm sure that I, I have to admit, analytics is not my strong suit right? when it comes to the stuff, Claudio, you, you do spend, you're, you're better at it than me. These are important things to take note of. And you can take analytics into your presentations too. If you do presentations and you're able to get 
evaluations, if you're able to get input or feedback from the people you present to, even if it's an interview. In, in the past, when I was interviewing for positions, if I didn't get the job, I would always ask, I would say, you know, thank you for the opportunity, wishing you the best. Looking back, I have a question for you to help me for future interviews. Is there any recommendation that you have to help me be a stronger candidate in the future? So I, mm. to let them know, I'm not mm -hmm. asking for feedback to, to get this job, but is there anything you as a, as a person who was inter as the interviewer could recommend that I do better? Most of the time I would never get an answer back, but sometimes I would. And it would help me understand why I didn't get the position. In one case, mm -hmm. a person was really honest and said, you know, unfortunately, we, we pretty much had secured a candidate in advance, but we did need to be sure and interview others. But at least that helped me feel better. Like, OK, I didn't get this because <laughs> they pretty much had a shoe in already. But, yep. you know, sometimes it's just helpful to ask. You don't always get an answer, but those are different type of analytics for our in-person interactions, too. Or if you have mm -hmm. someone who's willing to rehearse with you or like what you and Nathan do for everyone, being able to coach them through yeah. these types of presentations. But I think it's really important to sit back and evaluate and think about after it's all done, how was that? And, and yeah. the best way to do this is to watch yourself if you were able to record yourself, your Zoom mm -hmm. call, whatever it was and say, okay, what did I do well? What can I do better for next time? So to, yeah. to just be asking yourself those questions. Uh-oh, mm -hmm. I look like uh, I'm frozen sound, here. Yeah, you sound still here and okay, that's that one oh. camera. Did you just try to like do a nothing. thumbs up or is it one of those things here? <laughs> I thought I turned reactions off, but, uh, but maybe not. Maybe not. No, I do have re I do have reactions turned off, but okay. this is why it's important to have another camera available to you, too. I have no idea why my Sony has decided to freeze now that I was sitting here talking about how great my gear is and my high tech <laughs> stuff. That you know, camera is, is completely gone. This is just so you can give a demonstration to everybody here online on what to do when you're running into some issues, uh, some quick troubleshooting on the spot. So it's all good. It's all good. And you're still looking really, really good. But the focus of that camera is a little bit behind you, I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 So we'll just continue. I remember we had some technical issues last time as well. At that time, it was with some feed or something like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, let me quickly bring up yeah. a comment that Massimo made here because I think it's a really good thing that we talk about this as well. That you know, when you look at presentations today, even if it's just a single presenter they are pretty involved in the meantime, right? Like the bar is being raised with every bit of technology that goes out there that people start to adopt, right? So right now uh, you can have an advantage when you're using your webcam in your PowerPoint slides, but in six months from now, everybody's doing it. You need to be doing it as well. So now we have all this as, as Massimo says, acting, effects, props, and such. It's a big job. What is your take on this, Tatiana, in terms of, you know, do we have to raise the bar continuously? Are attention spans perhaps getting shorter and shorter? Or are we sometimes just doing this for the sake of doing it? I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this, and it's a he, I don't think that our attention spans are getting shorter mm -hmm. because if they were, none of us would be able to binge watch television shows, right? Our yep. attention just wouldn't be there. I think in the science, it talks a lot about rewards. And so when we are paying attention to a stimulus, we basically want to seek out rewards, seek out the things that are comfortable and avoid the things that are not comfortable. So that's an important concept for us to learn as presenters too. Are we offering rewards in our speech? Do, are we helping people feel good by being with us or are we just very easy to tune out? Now I am a little bit old school, right? That concept of respect and attention is still important. I'm still bothered in class if a student is distracted by their technology and I will address it. I, I can't help mm -hmm. it. It's just, it's just in me, right? Sometimes I wish I could ignore it a little bit more easily but it just, it just doesn't work for me. So, 
certainly we are getting, I mean, think, think back to this. When movies first came out, they didn't even have audio. They were silent movies, and we thought that was fascinating. Very quickly, we wanted the sound. Very quickly, we wanted color. Very quickly, we wanted HD. Very video games, right? What, what Mario Brothers, when I was a kid, Super Mario Brothers as a kid, is like rudimentary compared to what the visuals look like now, right? These are just the things that we get used to. It's, it's just life. Yeah. It's just the way that it is. So we do, but we do need to continuously be leveling up or we'll get left behind. Like you remember Blockbuster That's Video it. Company, right? They didn't That's adapt it. and they got left behind. So it's our choice. Like if we don't want to adapt, then yep. people will find another presenter that will incorporate the stuff that they do find more rewarding. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, Tatiana, we've been going on here for 40 minutes. We have another five minutes left. And I definitely want to bring up a comment that Philip made here as well. And that is the concept of transfer of energy, emotion. I call it the transfer of enthusiasm, entrainment between the presenter and the audience. Would you consider that perhaps a sixth D? I actually like that concept very mm -hmm. much. And mm -hmm. that that to me is the element of audience engagement and audience interaction, which is a huge part of presenting that I think uh, there's an I, I spend like two to three classes in my public speaking class just talking about that part. But absolutely, I love that you're bringing this mm -hmm. up, Philip. I think it's valuable and and I often will say, like, just because we're in the education space doesn't mean that it has to be boring, right? There is such a thing as edutainment where it's still valuable, but we're still having fun as well. So, mm -hmm. and, and, and I didn't focus on audience engagement specifically today because I know that a lot of you guys, when you're presenting, you have a limited time and you're not, do, you're not able to mm -hmm. do direct audience engagement activities like I would, like you would be able to if you had an hour with people or two hours or even regular sessions with folks like I do in my, in my college classes. But one great thing that you're making me think about is a tip to remember to incorporate rhetorical audience engagement by asking questions. Uh -huh. They're not meant to be answered out loud, but you are asking them to imagine, to visualize, think back to all these different rhetorical questions that you can add and sprinkle them throughout, pepper them throughout your presentation so that because the human brain can't help but want to answer a question when we're asked a question. So if we're watching a live stream and someone on the stream says, think about when you were 10 years old, right? Did you, what was your favorite outdoor activity? Our minds can't help but answer and think about that question. So we want to be able to incorporate rhetorical strategies as much as we can and direct strategies as well when we have a little bit, a little bit more time. And mm -hmm. I do have some recommendations of folks and mm -hmm. my camera, my camera might kaputs on here, but let's see. <laughs> yes, yes, it so does. I'm, st but... I'm, st I'm, still, I'm still in that frozen mode here, but let's just go with it for a second here. Dr. Uh -huh. Carmen Simon, you know how to get in touch with her. Another person I want to recommend to you is Jan Keck. Claudio and I are both a part of his community and he does excellent work. He was even uh, a guest speaker here a few weeks ago, right, Claudio? Mm -hmm. So Jan yeah. Keck at Jan Keck. Chad Littlefield talks a lot about virtual engagement, and he's at Chad Littlefield. And then I want to recommend this website to you, which is the, let's see if I can close out that. This is the Session Lab Library, right? They, they are a software company. They, they have online tools, but they have this entire free library of activities that are absolutely wonderful and a great option for us who want to get better at virtual presenting as well. So those are a few, there are so many more recommendations, but I wanted to at least give you guys a few to walk away from today to continue exploring and developing those virtual presentation skills. Wow, Tatiana, Tatiana, this is absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, we are already at the end of our episode here. 
and uh, I think that happened the last time as well. So that was about three, four months ago. <laughs> so I would say, Tatiana, come on back in about three or four months and let's <laughs> let's continue that. By that time, Nathan will be on the screen as well again. So we'll have a lot of fun together. For now, thank I just you. want to thank you, Tatiana, really from the bottom of my heart. Absolutely. Thank you. You have brought so much insight in a such an engaging and entertaining way. You're really, really not just talking about it. You're doing it. You're showing it. And I want to thank everybody who joined us today here live, uh, making it engaging for everybody, including Tatiana and me as well. And yes, thank you. I yes, love the engagement have, in the chat. Thank you. We did have a couple of technical hiccups here <laughs> and it makes it real. And that's exactly the point. I think Tatiana and I, we are on the same page here. It's that human aspect that actually puts the icing on the cake and can never ever be replaced by AI or any kind of technology because they're just too good. So thank you all for being here and thank you everybody for watching the replay. And with that, wherever you are in the world, I wish you a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, and see you again. Bye next everyone. Time. Bye. Thank you.